everybody, and good Friday evening to you. Had a good weather guy moment uh, this evening. Of course, when I came into work in the middle of the afternoon, today it was dry. I left the umbrella in the car, and then I ordered takeout here in downtown Youngstown for after the 6 p.m. for my dinner. And at that point, of course, it was absolutely pouring rain, and I didn't have my umbrella with me, so... If you were downtown around uh, 6 30 or so you saw the weather guy running uh and getting very very wet here in uh, downtown youngstown uh with the uh, showers that have been pushing through and you know it's been one of those days today where your mileage definitely varies some places have had hardly any rain over the last 24 to 48 hours and some places have had way too much rain the flooding problems were most common today in lawrence county over in pennsylvania and just a reminder because it's that time of the year. These things can happen with a fair amount of frequency in late spring and early summer. Uh, you know, it doesn't take much water, especially if it's moving water, to uh, carry away vehicles. Um, it only takes a couple of feet worth of moving water to carry away even large vehicles like trucks. And so that's why we always say turn around, don't drown. Um, don't drive past barricaded roads that have been closed because of flooding. Don't try to drive through flooded roadways because you just don't know how deep the water is. And, you know, we, we say these things every year, but unfortunately we, we still see pictures and video of people attempting to uh, do these things, and some people aren't so successful. So things to keep in mind. In the last 48 hours, these are radar estimates, and, you know, some of these numbers are a little inflated down in Carroll County, especially by the presence of some hail uh, within some of those storms yesterday, but legitimately at least three or four inches of rain, pretty common, just north of Carrollton, and over towards Selineville, in the far southwestern corner of Columbiana County, northeastern corner of Carroll County. But compare that to, you know, right around Route 14 near the Columbiana Mahoning uh, line. You know, amounts very modest in through there. Almost nothing in our far northwest viewing area over the last 48 hours. And, uh, you know, today most of the problems, of course, were over in Lawrence County. But, yeah, just a wide, wide variety of rainfall totals over the last 48 hours. And over the last 12 hours specifically, most of the problems were in the afternoon today in the Newcastle area and just south of there, Bessemer, um, near the state line from New Middletown on east, two, three inches plus worth of rain fell in just a few hours and that caused a lot of problems. And there's been a lot of problems near Pittsburgh over the last several hours as well, especially the southern side and the eastern side of the Pittsburgh metro area. All right, at 7.12 p.m., the last of our showers are going to fade away this evening. It's still raining at a good clip as I'm recording this video right along the state line, right on the border of Mahoning and Lawrence counties. And we don't need another drop of rain, certainly, in New Wilmington and Newcastle and over towards Slippery Rock, but it's going to rain for a little while longer here in the 7 o'clock hour than we should be in much better shape for the overnight tonight. And speaking of better shape, we've got a great forecast for the start of the weekend. We still have this stationary boundary off to our uh, north and west. It hasn't really moved much since I showed you this same map yesterday. The front is kind of right in through here. But tomorrow is the day that this front's going to start to move. And that drier air that's up over Detroit and Lansing and Chicago and Milwaukee right now is going to head our way to kick off the... Uh, the uh, weekend, we'll skip past high-res futurecast, didn't mean to throw that in there because not much to show you for tonight. I think the last of our raindrops will depart this evening. Now, the sky is going to be mostly cloudy for a lot of the night, but there, if there can be some partial clearing for a time tonight, with all this moisture on the ground, depending on the location, of course, uh, there could be some fog setting up. The wind will be pretty light overnight, so here's one model depiction of the uh, coverage of the fog in the wee hours of Saturday morning. It's not going to be a widespread thing, but there could be some localized reductions in visibility at the start of the day on Saturday. Otherwise, here's uh, the good news. That uh, dew point map I showed you will look a lot different 24 hours from now as our dew points locally will drop from the mid-60s into at least the mid-50s by the second half of Saturday. That's easily, easily the better part of the weekend. Saturday's looking great as front pushes off to the east. Now, unfortunately, if you've been paying attention to forecasts for over the last 48 hours, our Sunday forecast has trended in the wrong direction, and that's because... There's going to be a, a wave of low pressure. The, the weather models a couple of days ago weren't really picking up on this, but uh, they started picking up on it yesterday and especially last night and into uh, today as well. And because of the presence of this feature, we've had to allow for a real high chance now of showers on Sunday. It's almost guaranteed that most of us are going to see some rain on Sunday, mostly midday into the afternoon. Here's 12, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. As we try to get into a warm sector, there could be a couple of thunderstorms trying to develop in the afternoon. Best chance for thunders probably in southeast Ohio, West Virginia, southwest PA, but can't rule out some thunder around our viewing area as well. So an unsettled midday and afternoon on Sunday. And then on Monday, we'll probably get off to a dry start. Could be some fog. 
um, the midday and afternoon looking unsettled once again as another feature heads our way. That'll be the most unsettled day of the uh, work week next week, Monday. After that, things are looking pretty good. Could be a couple of showers around Tuesday, but don't think that's a rainy day by any stretch. And while temperatures will be a little below the average to kick off the work week, look what happens during the second half of the week. We go back above the average. I don't think we're going to see 90 anytime real soon, but here's the next 10 days, and then here's today's week's 3 and 4 outlook from the Climate Prediction Center, showing a lot of orange, which means pretty good odds of a warmer than average stretch, not only here locally, but throughout most of the Great Lakes region, the Midwest as well. I, I posted on social media earlier, but in case you missed that, you know, I got a lot of comments in May when it was so crummy outside. It was cool. It was damp. Oh, we're going to have a cool summer, and that's just not, you know, the case most of the time. Our, our weather pattern in May does really not have much of a correlation to the summer season, so just because it was cool in May doesn't mean it's going to be cool this summer, and again, while I don't see any high, high heat coming our way anytime real soon, I showed you the 10-day forecast. Here's weeks three and four. We've got a lot of just typical summertime warmth coming our way for the rest of June. So I don't think June is going to follow suit like May. I don't think it's going to be a cooler than average month. June is likely to be warmer than the average when all is said and done. I hope you have a great Friday night, a great weekend, everyone. I'll see you back here on Monday for a fresh edition of the Valley's Most In-Depth Weather Forecast video.